जे अनिलो प्रेमा धरम काचो ಮಗಳ <laughs> the top of um service from small to the small in the level of fashion of mission is still in its character because we got trained to look at the show of the small to the small to the third class from the living third class to his perfectionist nature he revived the world of mission everything is the best of the Krishna we can't be blessed but to know and to see that we still come up and that standard that we see now he is doing his responsibility to you to actually do the chakra because the Krishna is the chakra to show up and then he can achieve that first time Doing his work to be done with the woman. The same kind of thing she was fixing by a really great show called us to me. And when you lift up, you lift up. That is independent. And that is in me. And then as it is said, he said, he did this. He took us to the spiritual world. And if you were all in tune with that, you would have got a chance. Already. So I leave my dedication to you, and I hope you can come up to the mark so that you have a good connection to the Krishna Krishna. Yes, what you have done is very important that there is still a little bit of gold around Sala Krishna 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 Heartfelt wishes to all. What is your name? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Good morning. So good luck in your mission. You're going on a lot. Good morning. Now I'm going to talk about it. 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 So I, I first became associated with Shiva Samal Krishna Goswami Maharaj uh, for a long period of time in 1984. I'm sure you still I was a little discouraged and 
about going and working in another zone, but he convinced me by his sincerity and that sentiment to reach out to someone. The most important thing for us is that someone cares for us. And when that happens, we feel that something is better. One guy that I saw said that whenever I see the most people with mommy, I think of Alzheimer's. Uh, 
呃，下部的他们去上过上面的那个旅游队，然后拉着他们那里旅游的。So he is my personal guide, friend, instructor, and for many many years, his personal servant, cook, and secretary in 1980, and he brought me how to become self-reliant and actually is an answer. But he initially asked me to leave everything behind and go to China. So that's why my thoughts of association for some time. But, seeing his example and following his instructions, always helped me to know that he was all about. So when I had no service, I went to Dallas. And, and I'm looking for our suggestion that I go to the Philippines. Because that was not the first place that I wanted to go to. He got to the Kinky for Civil War. So, the instruction is not a Christian line to the Philippines. Now, the Christian line is not a Christian line, but they say that the instruction Christian gave me the most wonderful experience in the Philippines. And later on, he instructed me to go to other places like Fiji and Europe. So I always feel that there's no more uh, better friends, better guys for me than Tom Krishna. So I always pray about the mercy of the followers, the disciples, and the churches that I didn't know the instruction. And continue to go to the world in that way. But, actually, I think, you know, I think, I'll stand in the divide. Even the British.
and then this device is all the time. In the meantime, I got in and I need to see the environment. The rest clear and the team wants to be put into my screen mind and the push was not to me in the book. I in my mind is not I was not convinced. Even though everybody knows that that's what we wanted. My mind is not convinced. I was sure that he was going to put it in my screen mind. Oh, and it means this is just at the point where I was in complete anxiety for the truth to all of us know me. You know, I don't know if you're right to say this. We got a call to you, and that was the honor is, and spirit is, although I'm not sure what to do this time, but I'll try. This is directly to the group. As we did, the body is coming out. As the gift of life is being offered, it is very non firm. I would like to be very in the most beautiful location in the front garden of the Golden Rock of the Russian. The location is the land of 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 the its size and design to also be the same type of three-yard home in the age of Arjun. So my man, my son, disciples, and disciples, treasure, may offer their respect to the remnant. The very rich and honorable in him shall come from the truth. Through words and endless life next. The shoe is
and we can go on with our hands in each other, to each other, to others. <coughs> we can absorb ourselves in this Christian consciousness. <coughs> oh, my, my big guy is totally beyond Christianity. Thank you. 
Actually, when I joined uh, in San Francisco, I saw him there with. Uh, I don't have. I don't. He, he was the main person to talk to me. That was Jai Nanda, but I, I saw him in the Kirtan and everything. I saw these wonderful devotees, and they were very inspiring. They were kind of uh, inspirational for me to join when I saw them. such wonderful devotees. But actually, in 1970, when I came to India, at that time, uh, television Horace was my QPC from 1971. And Sri uh, Ramana made the temple president in Calcutta. And as my QPC, he was uh, supposed to guide me and, and uh, see that I did my service properly, but he was uh, very much a perfectionist. I am a very imperfect person. And therefore, I always, uh, in fact, I was the temple president in Calcutta 11 times. <laughs> I know the record. And 10 times uh, I was uh, removed by Kama <laughs> But either he would put me back when the alternative was turned out to be worse, or the uh, Prova <laughs> sometimes put me back. But the 11th time Prova removed me. So. But we, uh, apart from those uh, moments, it was. Uh, he was very uh, kind. Different times, or uh, a friend. Uh, <laughs> one time, although I was kind of some, almost like a, a sister, my GBC was some uh, awe and respect. Although I had too much awe, so I was kind of a self-sufficient person. Once I moved to Mayapur, then uh, I never got moved. And uh, our relationship, uh, we just started working together as a team. In fact, uh, there was a very strong team and we're all very much dedicated for developing the Mayapur project. In 1977, then we uh, became, around that time, co GPC is uh, sometime, I forget exactly why we had the co GPC in the Mayapur. Uh, we were working together. In 1989, when I was in the hospital after being in intensive care and almost uh, dying, then uh, Tal Kishimura came to see me at the hospital along with Shivara Maharaj with his uh, going to type meetings. And at that time, he gave, I, I, I never brought him to it because he took it off in intensive care. And um, so I asked him to give the chant out of Brahman Trek because I wanted a, a thread that was chanted in the farm ground problem. This kind of not chant on the problem track, have a problem track given to me. And um, yesterday, I, when we were cleaning him in the room, I saw that he didn't have a problem track. So I turned it on one for his bank. Because I really didn't want to have one also that was chanted by somebody. Oh, I'm not qualified. I was always grateful for him uh, for coming. It's uh, he was about to get his PhD to work on the Mayapur and develop the Mayapur University. <clears throat> and he was just attending the Mayapur development meeting, getting all valuable contributions <clears throat> for a Mayapur project. It's uh, inconceivable how these things are going to go on. That's why <clears throat> the lawyer. That's an inconceivable plan. And so, since the Tama Pishnamaras is certainly with Srila Prabhupada, then I'm sure that both of them will make the plan and arrangement so that these two uncompleted services can be done by his followers. Some of the more he's asked me to say what happened yesterday. I'm just talking briefly, but. Because uh, I was in a Gayatri and Shura Maharaj came up and I just dropped her when he said that Tama Krishna I got Maharaj got in an accident and we jumped into a car with uh, a member with Jai Vaidya Maharaj, Patibhinda Govinda Maharaj and Shura Maharaj. 
first they called up the Humming for a temple that, and then they go out and see whatever they could do. When we got to the site, it was really amazing. It was so horrible to see this car. But the people said, well, don't worry. Everybody was all right. They were just injured, but nobody had to rain. And I was sure that so many remaining services were there that Krishna must have allowed Kama Krishna Maharaj to survive. One thing is that this place where it happens is a place called Puya. It's in the part of the Dham. And it's a place where Harika Thakur used to chant his 300,000 names of Krishna. It's a place of the Namacharya. And there's any place in Bengal that's associated purely with Harika Thakur, this is one of them. So it seems very significant that he was doing all this Harika Thakur in the place he passed the lane was Harika Thakur, Bhajan's place. When we got there, it was just inconceivable when they told us that actually he had gone. Immediately everybody paid our relationship and were overwhelmed with emotion. And then the doctor came up and said, there's one lady in Vindavan Ishwari. You can't do anything about him. The doctors are so worried about saving lives. You can try to save her. So at that time, but now the Lord realized that everybody was overwhelmed. It was like a teamwork. I was trying to arrange the, with the doctor to take care of uh, Mangala Nishwari, shift her to a Calcutta hospital. Dada Mir Maharaj, he was chanting outside. And Kira Maharaj and uh, Bhakti Ringo Linda Maharaj were comforting and giving their compassion to the disciples. And Jai Brayton, while she was helping me, because it was so difficult that she had to do anything like this under their emotion. So, I'll give some of the other details. I missed this right One thing was really amazing. After we had put Baba Krishna Maharaj and Vrindavan Nishwari's body into the, into the vehicle, about 300 people surrounded and we'll let the vehicle go. They said, we waited here all day to see a saint who had left his body. Unless we can see him, we're not letting him go. And it was just like a big stalemate. They let him see the lotus feet, but they said, no, we want to see his lotus feet. He said, so finally we had to surrender, otherwise uh, they wouldn't have let us go. They were like laying in front of us, the tire. So we'll die, but we want to see him. So he had so much, even in his uh, final Vila, he was getting everyone to everyone at the camp, Hare Krishna. They all were going to him, and he went spontaneously to the camp, and the was running. And on the way out, the vehicle was going everywhere. I mean, I don't know if you know Shanti for it, statements from people who offend by Shnala. This is the first time I ever saw when he drew the Shanti for everybody was chanting spontaneously Hare Krishna. That was an amazing thing. So this is a count of a lot of this time. Kama Krishna has touched many people. That uh, his wisdom, his loyalty, the Prabhupada, his devotion, his Krishna, so the Prabhupada consciousness, his aristocracy, the left of deep impression on everyone. And also his disciples, they're all very well trained up and uh, dedicated disciples uh, tremendous access to this Krishna conscious movement. So he was promoting the concept that his son is a big family and that we have to work in that family spirit. I think well, at this moment we also have to consider about the disciples and the followers. Some of Krishna Maharaj uh, lives with you and all of us through his teachings and his 
mission, the mission of Shura Prabhupada, his footsteps to following disciples, uh, this is a disappearance, it's a great test because up to now everyone has the Babu association, but now we have to surrender to the Vani. I'm sure after you've been trained up so nicely, all of you will be wonderful examples. We're all sharing the separation with all of you, and we hope as one family we can give you all the support and find you through this most difficult period. This is uh, difficult for you to follow in his footsteps because he was such a special example of such a high quality. But we are sure that with his blessings we'll all be able to do it. I just remember when people were making the offering, so I met one Prabhupada's godbrother called Jaja Barbara. He was one of the last people to be initiated by Om Vishnu Parashurabhadi Siddhartha Sarasuki Thakur. And he wrote a song after our, after Prabhupada left in separation of all his godbrothers. And he glorified each godbrother for something that they did for the spiritual master, for Prabhupada, for spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. And he was telling me if he was like there's only at that time about five or six of his godbrothers on the planet. And he was saying how but separation he was feeling from all of his staff brothers. So, so by Tom Fishman's uh, leaving now, he's in, increased all our consciousness, how important this association with God was that after what Dr. Green of Indomar said, I'm really strong and I'm sick. I wonder why he never told me that before. I always brought myself totally unqualified to be associating with such an exalted person as Brahma Krishna Maharaj. Although this time I could go with him to the Ganga. And now he makes us feel, I don't know how to feel really bad. But I always thought that he's much more expert than I am. Apart from that, though, so we just got a lot of association with maintenance. I'm considering as my most dear friend and as a very dear godbrother. I want to thank you for all your association, Kamakish Maharaj. I'm sorry if I didn't reciprocate as much as I could have. Jai to the Kamakish Maharaj. So I don't want to pack it in. But to say, the best moment of a great tragedy, if I can express that term, said it to the disciples of Bhagavan, the most moment, if I could share with you in our prayer. Blessings of the language of and I'm out of And uh, in Russian days, in the But uh, how I search the language of the Association with the God's Mars is a primary and hard to tell you the global spectrum of the small sector in 1977. We had a lot of discussions, mainly about the pretty much global presentation of the machine building. There has to be a lot of independent prediction. The level in the trial, every time it was at the bottom. And I believe that some of the Samaritan also appeared to have power in 
for the connect the order of Pakistan and Sanskrit Chakra. Sir Prabhupada had been known, came to the West all along, and then since the Holy came forward. And Talam Krishna Mahat, from the beginning, took on a lot of responsibility to really help us, our big headache to manage his son. He was an earlier about his job when he was the president of Los Angeles. I remember initially, Prabhupada appointed two people to look after his son's society affairs, one on the West Coast, one on the East Coast. And later on, we saw how countries, and we saw it times for the past.
to be with Sheila Carlson during his final day, which anyone who was there knows very clearly how attentively and lovingly Tamanka Shimarash attended to that service. I remember um, in those last few days before she was off my class, I happened to be picking something leaves and she was off the garden. And uh, I saw Krishna Maharaj and Ahmad uh, Maharaj at the time. We uh, were in the backyard and somehow I didn't get out of it, it was obviously. And uh, they were having a very, very intense and heated. A uh, conversation regarding the Gokha Lila. It was pretty much a dance if you do a dance if you don't situation where to, to, to take Prabhupada there, to go down there, to not take him there. So uh, I, I watched Gokha Shamaraj and, and Gokha um, arguing, discussing, and uh, actually crying. Really cry. And it, it was so visible how much, how profound they love them. So, although some people were surprised at how still it was that Trinidad was disappearance, I believe that he realize the reality that we did not want to accept and prepare himself. To do his duty perfectly and they always did like right to defeat. Personally, it's, um, it's like a huge gaping hole that will never kind of get filled that happens. And, uh, I don't know, but actually, I should have felt with this spirit. It was so, uh, I don't know the word to say, um, but what to do after Prabhupada left me and everyone wandering into the way I went wandering into the temple room and looked at Rabbi Shaman and was actually kind of in the madness of that moment. But how can Christians still be anything in my how is it possible? How could you do this? In a way, I feel a similar sentiment like this. Mama Shimon is just on the verge of doing something that I can't imagine anyone could do. And Prophet wanted it so much. But Christian planet is so frustrating that we can't see. But um, such a disappointment. Thank you. I um, first had an extended acquaintance with Kamal Krishna Goswami in the early 70s, 73. He had just started the Radha Damodar bus party in North America. Was before it became a multiple bus system, it was one bus, and so they should do not on it uh, from devotees. And uh, I was the president of uh, Philadelphia Temple, uh, which, although Philadelphia is the fourth largest city in America, it's only 90 miles from New York, and where everybody goes by Philadelphia to New York, but no one stops there. So I had not very much association uh, advanced devotees for any length of time. So the Radha bus party at that time, their, their uh, program was to, they started in Berkeley with uh, Kirtan, a uh, wonderful Kirtan led by Vishnu Janana on the college campus, and served out the Sada, to make devotees. Come on, Krishna goes on and told me the story how he wanted to go to America and preach. Prabhupada wanted him to stay in India to manage. It was such a 
confidence manager. And finally, some operations are ready to do it and go, but uh, probably that there must be some results. So they started this program in Berkeley. Uh, and when Prabhupada came and said, well, what have you done? Some officials described how he had a whole line of Brahmacharis, newly shaved up, and they came in one by one, offered a flower of Prabhupada's feet on the box. Prabhupada was in tears. said, okay, you can stay. And they got never one of those, of those persons. So anyway, the bus pulled up to the Philadelphia temple, and um, they're going to do the program there in Cows Across America. And to my great good fortune, the bus broke down. Uh, they couldn't get a replacement part because it would be kind of very old, the very on bus. And uh, so they were there, I think it must have been about a month. They couldn't leave. And so during that time, I had some uh, close association with how long Krishna goes from, you know, also. But especially Tom Krishna Maharaj made the great impression upon me because uh, I learned things uh, from him that are the foundation of my spiritual life. These are the things I don't think you can learn unless you see it. You can read about it, but you really won't get the idea until you see it. And what I learned from Tom Krishna Goswami was Yoga, intense, intense devotional service. I saw how intense and how focused he was in his devotional service. And then I also began to understand that his intensity of focus was, uh, was the intensity of the service to Srila Prabhupada. And that, that's how I learned what it meant to serve Srila Prabhupada. Not just to go around, Prabhupada, Prabhupada, Prabhupada. But actually, uh, do it. Bless and I'm forever grateful for him uh, for teaching me that. He taught me so many other things. So intelligent. I would go out with him every day. I arranged uh, for them to come to uh, uh, Temple University, where I was still registered as a graduate student, and do their program. And here's an example. And I'll tell you just one story. Uh, the, the Band would sit up and, 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 and chant Hare Krishna, and then there was a prasad on the table where people would get prasad, and it was always the same thing every day. It was uh, potatoes and peas with some kind of uh, cream sauce. It was malaba. It was uh, some kind of nectar with strawberries in it, and then puri, hard strawberry nectar and puri. That's what they threw out every day. And students would come right up, get a plate, sit down, and listen to the music, and eat, and then. Some of the was one took me around with him, stopped at each student and said, How do you like music? How do you like the food? And he said, If they say, Great, I love it, just sit and talk to them. If they say, Oh, it's all right, they go on somewhere else, don't waste your time. <laughs> I, I thought that was just him, so you just can sort out right from the very beginning who's what thought you do and who is not. So later, after he left, I did the same program myself. And I decided to see what would happen. I sat down with somebody and said, How do you like the food? How do you like the sun? So I decided to talk to him anyway, just to see what would happen. So I said, What is your major? And he said, It's that. And we talked. And eventually, I proved to him that at the university, there was no knowledge. And he said to me, Yeah, you're right. I can't argue with you, but I'm still right. <laughs> I saw that, that I learned that valuable lesson in efficiency and, and uh, intelligence in, 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 in preaching. I also saw how, how intensely uh, focused Tom Krishna Goswami was on all the details of the service. He tried to make sure everything was all right. He's a perfectionist. And we know perfectionists are like, they drive everybody around here crazy, and they drive themselves crazy. I, I understand that. But it was, it was interesting because uh, the person he was with, Vishnu Janaswam, was only wild. <laughs> but just, just the opposite in every way. 
And, uh, and I, I, I was amazed at how, how so much Tom Krishna Goswami had everything under control. And I didn't quite learn what the relationship was until this bus was parked in front of our temple for only a month. It was creating some concern in the neighborhood and it was attracting trouble. So one, one evening, some, some rowdy teenage boys drove by in their car and one of them flicked a lit cigarette into the, into the open window of the bus. Next thing you know, Vishnu Janam was running down the street with his mummy on, pulled up a shotgun, and was about to blow away at his car when his lungs his fell off. <laughs> and he had to stop and put it on. So I heard about this. I came running out of the temple. I mean, I think I had, you know, I had, I had a murder on my hands. You know. uh, and I, I, I said to him, uh, you can't. Why did you shoot at me? How did you shoot at me? He said, thank you for the cigarette in the bus. He said, just because of that. So then I went to the Mount Krishna Ghost Party and I said, but would you explain to Vishnu Jahan that just because somebody threw a lit cigarette in the bus is not sufficient grounds to shoot them. <laughs> the, the police killed them in jail. And the Mount Krishna Ghost Party looked at me and he said, you explain it to him. <laughs> so I can understand there was this relationship. <laughs> so uh, I, I formed a very, very deep attachment to him during that time. Uh, and uh, we liked each other. Uh, they had their program in the bus, and we had our program in the temple. They were, they were, they were segregated. And I used to get bothered from class in the temple. And I found out a few years later that, that uh, he and Vishnu did not like my bottle from class. So, of course, they didn't come inside the temple room, but they'd go outside the porch on the outside and look at the window. But I could not there. <laughs> so, uh, he, uh, he taught me uh, a lot. He taught me things that I had. I could have never learned uh, anywhere else. And I've always been his disciple. Later on, of course, the circumstance, only the same bus program in the later incarnation. He ended up on the opposite side of the bed. He can tell you about that, uh, that history. Uh, uh, but I've always, uh, I've always been indebted to him. And uh, any time I've been with him, I've always learned something new. Uh, and something interesting. Uh, we've been working together more lately because we're in the academic field. I know he has this tendency to um, wherever he goes, there's stuff like like lightning tracks or lightning rods. This is all always the industry. I tried to told him when he was getting involved with the academics. I said, I know somehow or sooner or later this is going to be so uproar just because you're there. I said, so you're on my territory now. I'm going to watch out for you. So I'll watch your back, and I'll, 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 I'll check things out. And I'll, you know, we'll, 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 we'll work together. So actually, he, he was very happy about this arrangement. And so we were, we were working together, uh, just doing something the day before uh, yesterday. That's a short time ago. So. It is the kind of his departures of we who are society. We can only heal it by coming together, rededicating ourselves to the same mission. Some of his Goswami dedicated his life to. I think all of his disciples uh, uh, have a special uh, benediction that they were taught by him uh, very carefully. And although he's now not visible to us. Uh, still, he is working uh, visibly uh, through his disciples, and we will see more and more of all his wonderful qualities manifest in them as time goes by. This is my conviction. To the Tamil Christian, Goswami Maharaj, he is. You know, I was doing good among the architects. I sit down, he went back to four, and shine in 16 hours. This was her focus. And just yesterday, when she left the body, uh, her hand was like this. <laughs>
discuss the very, very heavy hug that I can see today. Um, and Darwin actually was a very, very dear friend, and uh, I tell it because it was very, very difficult in my duty to speak about the noise. Um, I uh, first had the great fortune to meet in Darwin in uh, Berkeley in 1988 in Auckland, New Zealand. But actually, before that time, I had known of her through her outstanding service. And uh, at the end of every year, we have um, a marathon, Holocaust marathon. And um, during the mid 80s, there was a new devotee. Um, and her scores were surpassing previous big name Sangatan devotees like uh, Maestro Adele, Mandakini, Mother G, and everybody in the whole of the Asian zone wanted to know who was in Darwin Ashbury. Her scores were huge. And uh, she was able to collect, uh, I can't estimate, but it must be millions of dollars. And uh, was able to be empowered by the grace of Guru and Krishna to do that service. And uh, indeed, over the years, even though she had the extraordinary ability to collect large amounts of Lakshmi, she remained a very wonderful, humble servant of Guru and Krishna. And I just like to say on behalf of all the assembled devotees here that sometimes we take for granted the service of the devotees and we don't actually go up to them and thank them personally for the wonderful service that they've been actually done for God by this one. And um, I had a great fortune yesterday. Her body and her husband quite nicely described. Her hand was in the position of chanting on her beads, and when I lifted her body this part. I'm very clear that she was becoming Hare Krishna at the time of sleeping. So we know that the devotees are chanting Hare Krishna at the point of death. They're certainly guaranteed to go back home to Godhead. So on this most glorious day, but at the same time hard, because I know you love it. Some of the hardships and the separation of the devotee. <laughs> Thank you very much for being a very wonderful Vaishnavi. Can you come up here also? Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would like to begin this glorification by just giving a small background, a very brief look into the life of a young man who became a great spiritual leader and teacher. And that, of course, is referring to his holiness, 
Swami. He began his life as Thomas Herzog in a Jewish family that was a non-practicing family. In fact, they were, by his description, practically atheists. They did not mention God in the house, nor did they follow any particular religious practices. But he himself had a very keen and deep interest in the existence of God and the presence of God in his life. And so at night, when everyone else was sleeping, he would secretly pray to God to please protect those I love. At the age of 19, he left home to go to the big city, New York City. He left with the blessings and permission of his parents to look deeper into life. He had always been interested, as I mentioned, in the existence of God, and he felt he must search further. In 1966, seemingly by chance, he wandered into Tompkins Square Park, he had seen an advertisement for a cosmic love-in, and so he had decided to attend. He was, at that point, still young, about 19, and he brought with him his flute. He came upon a group of young men and women dancing and chanting. They didn't look so much different from the other young hippies who were gathered in the park that day. They too had longish hair and bell bottom jeans and long beads around their neck. But the long beads around their neck were of a bright red color and they were rather large. And each member of this group had a pair around their neck. They were singing and dancing in a rather hypnotic way, but young Tom found it very attractive. And he went over and he took out his flute and he tried to follow along with them. And then he found himself standing and trying to dance with them. And then he found himself trying to repeat the words of the song because he didn't know actually that it was a mantra at that time. And he spent about two, two and a half hours with this group. And then he left the park. Interestingly enough, he was living only a few blocks away. And 26th Avenue, 2nd Avenue was also a few blocks away. But somehow or other, he wasn't destined at that time to go to that place of pilgrimage. Instead, he decided to go to the West Coast because he felt that New York City was just too heavy and he wanted to go and experience life in the country. So he went to the West Coast and he joined a commune called Morning Star. Morning Star was at the time a, what you would say, hippie commune and it was dedicated to life and exploration and many young men and women were living there in the forest. Many of them, weather permitting, were not bothering to wear much more than the shadows of the trees. And they were trying to experience nature. So this is where he came to live, and he found himself a hollowed out tree to live in. Interestingly enough, one month earlier, his divine grace, Eva Prabhupada, had also visited Morning Star. Even though Morning Star was not known for its chaste, chaste behavior, still some devotees had gone there and they felt that these people were definitely searching and were definitely receptive to the message of Krishna consciousness. So they presented the idea to Eva Prabhupada that if you went, they would actually be won over. And Sri the Prabhupada agreed to go. And in fact, many young hearts were won over on that visit. So when Tamal Krishna or Thomas Herzog arrived, although Sri the Prabhupada had been there a month previously, 
what was remaining was a spontaneous mood among that community for chanting Hare Krishna. So several times during the day there would be these sudden kirtans and people would grab an instrument, a drum or whatever and start chanting. So once again he was reintroduced to the sounds of the Maha Mantra. After living for some time with nature and feeling that he had accomplished all he, that he could in that particular environment, he decided to return to the city of San Francisco. And this was the height of the hippie heyday. And in that mood, there was a kind of wide open atmosphere for letting everybody do their own thing and for love and peace, brother. <laughs> this was the mantras of the day. He met a friend who had formerly lived at Morningstar, and the friend had now become a member of the young newly formed Hare Krishna Center, and he invited him to come on the following Sunday for one of the love feasts. When Tamal Krishna, our Thomas Hirsad, arrived at the little temple on Frederick Street, which was a small storefront, his divine grace to the Prabhupada, or Swamiji, as he was known in those days, was leading the kirtan. It so happened that Tamal Krishna had another engagement that evening, so right after the kirtan was ended, he had to depart and he couldn't stay to hear it. Swamiji speak. But the effect of hearing the kirtan from the lotus mouth of Srila Prabhupada was enough to convince him that he had to come back to hear him speak. So along with his friend Mark, they departed, but they vowed they would definitely come back. And that Friday night, they did come back to hear his divine grace speak about Krishna consciousness. They were connected, um, Tom and Mark, they were connected with a Western self-proclaimed guru. In fact, they had even become his assistants. But never before, in all the lectures they had heard from this Western guru, had they heard words like they heard from Siddha Prabhupada, speaking directly about the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the needs for a principled life for following regulated principles. In fact, they heard for the first time the four rules of regulations. They were very impressed, and they started coming more and more to see the Prabhupada's lectures, and going less and less to the Western Guru. Tom bought the Srimad Bhagavatam and began to read it regularly, and they began chanting on these. At that time, Tom was living in the basement, of a group of hippies who were vegetarian. But for some reason they gave up that practice and suddenly the shared kitchen became an intolerable place. This was significant because now he was forced to think of an alternative to cooking in his own home. And that alternative became going every morning to the Hare Krishna Center where they served breakfast. And after breakfast, he would remain during the day reading, and then it came that he started doing regular service. His first service was scrubbing the pots, and he even described how his favorite pot was the doll pot, because it was the biggest pot, and there was always bits of doll clinging to the bottom, and he had to scrub very hard to make that pot clean. But the devotees had told him that scrubbing pots is equal to scrubbing your heart, and it pleases Krishna very much. So he felt very much um, connected to the service. And sometimes when he was done, if he had time, he would also clean the kitchen floor. So this was the beginning. And then, after some time, both he and Mark, in a very spontaneous gesture, and one night they decided the next day we'll move into the temple. And they showed up the next day with their bags, only to find out that the devotees said, no, you can't come in just like this. So they were a little feeling a little set back. But the next day when they returned, the devotees were smiling and said, we've talked it over and you can move in. 
And so on that day, they moved in. And from that point on, um, became more and more committed and dedicated to the process of Krishna consciousness. Actually, after hearing the need for following regulative principles, Tom became so convinced that without further consideration, he accepted this as necess necessary, and he gave up any activities that involved breaking the regulative principles immediately. When moving into the temple, he still had longish hair, and he felt a little hesitant to completely cut it, so he trimmed it. But Mark sat right down and said, okay, take it off, and he shaved right up. <laughs> Sometime later, in Easter of 68, Sri Prabhupada announced there would be an initiation, and both Mark and Tom were initiated. Mark became Vishnu Janan, Das Brahmachari at the time, or actually he was Adhikari, as a matter of fact. And Srila Prabhupada turned to Tom and handed him his beads and said, Your name will be Tamal Krishna. He said, Tamal is a blackish tree in Vrindavan, and sometimes the gopis mistake that tree for Krishna and embrace it. And Radharani takes rest under the shade of that tree. And then four days later, his divine grace left San Francisco, leaving the devotees brokenhearted and forlorn in separation. So I've been informed that I have two minutes, so I'm just going to tell one brief thing. During, right before his departure, Prabhupada told the brahmacharis that they should get jobs because it was only Jayananda who was supporting the temple at the time. So everyone, all of the brahmacharis, can any of you imagine doing this nowadays? They went out and got jobs, including Tamal Krishna. So they were working, but it was horrendous because they were spending their entire day with harmies who were eating meat at lunchtime and smoking even during work and, you know, speaking all kinds of very unpalatable Kajaba discussions. And on top of that, they were all kind of in the minimum wage bracket, which meant they didn't bring home very much at the end of the week. So Prabhupada heard about this, and he said, in a letter, he said, just forget about it and go out and chant. The very next day, so they all quit their jobs, like that day, they, uh, the next day. And the very next day after that, the first... Sankirtan party in the history of this gun went out. Tamal Krishna, Vishnu Janan, Jamuna, who else was there? There was two others. Anyway, they went out um, on Market and Pal in San Francisco, and just the five of them chanting, and they had a few little of those original back to God hits, which were just mimeograph papers stapled together at the corner, and they were passed out, and then almost spontaneously, Tamal Krishna, who had a conch that he'd been blowing, took that conch and he started passing the conch around. The people started offering donations. So the historic value of this story is first that the Sankatan movement was officially inaugurated and book distribution began in this way. That day they brought home $12 and they were very excited. And by the end of the week, more and more back to God heads were going out and they brought in $40 regularly. So this was a very historical event, and this was one of the many, um, many, many firsts that were brought about by Tawal Krishna, who was hearing Prabhupada and not hesitating to act upon his orders. His Holiness Tawal Krishna Goswami, please. <laughs> What's the allotted time? Yeah. Ten minutes. Panchakalpa to be stuck here for some day, which have a deep and unbalanabial relation of Abiyo the Mama Namaha. I first began to have association with Tamil Krishna Goswami in Philadelphia when uh, I forgot the exact year, 73 or 74. They started the Radha Damada bus party. This is when there was one bus. Hmm? And there was, uh, he got together with uh, his old buddy, Krishna Janan Swami. And 
they were going to travel around America and make devotees. But they had a bhajan band uh, for setting up on college campuses. And uh, <clears throat> went this way would uh, make devotees. So I showed up in Philadelphia. Uh, and uh, I have to say, in 71, I, I, the same year, 71, I joined the temple. I got initiated and became temple president. Uh, and I was trained in Krishna consciousness by the method of throwing you in the water and see if you can swim. <laughs> this is all my training. And I had not much uh, senior association for any extended amount of time because Philadelphia, everybody went right by up the highway to New York. And no one stopped there. So, uh, um, so this bus came, uh, uh, parked in front of our temple with uh, Tamal Krishna Vishnu It broke down. It was a very old bus, and they had a hard time getting their parts for repair. So they were there for almost two months. They couldn't leave. Uh, so this is about my big benediction. Uh, and uh, uh, it was a, a revelation uh, to me. I, I became uh, very good friends with, with uh, Tamal Krishna Goswami. And uh, what I learned from him, uh, which I think you can only learn, uh, really learn by personal association, was uh, intensity of devotional service. He was intense. And he was practicing Krishna consciousness in a very intense uh, way. And uh, I saw it. I mean, I'd never really been exposed to it like that for one, two, three weeks. And I started to do like he was doing as much as I could. And I began to make a lot of spiritual advancement just by following in his footsteps and under his instructions. And... Uh, and uh, so I, I have always been indebted to him. Uh, over the course of the years, sometimes we found ourselves on opposite sides of controversies. Uh, and, uh, but I never, ever uh, forgot the debt uh, I owed him uh, for that, uh, that intensity of devotional service. The, uh, it was an interesting party. He was together with Vishnu and Janan, and I never saw two people who were more opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, in my in my whole life, Tamal Krishna Goswami was very intense and enormously organized, and everything under his uh, under his control was under his control, except the Vishnu Janaswami. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they uh, <laughs> the bus was sitting outside our temple for. Uh, quite a long time, and some neighborhood kids were, uh, rowdy kids were uh, driving by in the evening and hooting and hollering and screaming and driving off again. One day they, they uh, I just want to tell you the story to just sort of give you the relationship between Vishnu Janana and Tamil Krishna Goswami. Uh, so, so the kids uh, in this car, they, 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 Pull up next to the bus, they whooped and hollered and screamed some obscenities, and somebody flicked a lit cigarette into the bus window. Then they pulled off a little ways ahead. Uh, and then Vishnu Janan came tearing out of the bus with a shotgun. <laughs> and he uh, took a stance in the middle of the street, uh, chambered uh, around in, in the shotgun barrel, and was taking aim. These people started driving away. I was about to shoot them with a shotgun. Unfortunately, his, his lung fell off. <laughs> <laughs> and he decided that he would pull his lung up rather than shoot them. <laughs> Somebody came to run and tell me about this, and then he was organizing some guys to track them down. Um, so I... Uh, I uh, Somebody ran and tell me about this, and I was enormously concerned because. Uh, so I, I got a hold of, uh, got, got to Vishnu and John, and I said, you know, you, you can't, uh, you can't do this because somebody, uh, you know, this is not not right. And he said they put a cigarette, a lit cigarette, in the bus. I said, but for a lit cigarette, you can't shoot somebody. <laughs> this will not fly with the police. <laughs> so I, at least I, I stopped him. Uh, from taking immediate retribution. But 
but I was afraid of the next time. So I went to Tamal Krishna Goswami, who obviously had everything so well in control, was in charge of everything. And I said to him, I told him what happened, and I said to him, would you explain to Vishnu Chanan Swami that because just because somebody puts a throws a lit cigarette in the bus, you can't shoot them? <laughs> Tamal Krishna looked at me and said, you explain it to him. <laughs> I understood the relationship. <laughs> I learned many things. Uh, they, at those days, they would go out on a college campus. It was so well organized and so systematic. They'd go out on a college campus, and they had a band playing that Vishnu Janan was, was uh, leading, and uh, they had uh, Sri Ram was playing the Sarangi, or the, Sar the Sarangi, and, and, uh, and not, you know, you've, you've maybe most of you have heard the tape from, from those days. They would, they would play the Kirtan, and then they had a prasadam every day, uh, some kind of uh, peas and potatoes sabji, and uh, halava, uh, puris, and, uh, and a strawberry, banana, and nectar that they hand out, and people would do. And uh, but this is something, I, this is how well Tamal Krishna thought and about everything that he did. Uh, uh, he, I went around with him. Uh, kids would come, they, they'd get a plate of prasadam, they sit down in the glass and they listen to the music. And Tamal Krishna says, I, 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 he said, oh, we go, I go around. Uh, and I went with him and he would say to every, uh, every kid, how do you like the food? How do you like the music? And he, he told me that, 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 that if they said, man, nah, it's all right. He, I said, I go on to the next person. If, if, if they don't, show any attraction or enthusiasm. Why waste my time? But but if they're they oh it's great, I love it, I like it, it's really nice. Then I then he said I stop 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 and preach to me. So it's really interesting how, how he thought through that not to waste his time and use this as a kind of filter to see who are the people who are actually attracted and who are not attracted. He says otherwise you just waste your time. So I tested it. I, I found some kid who wasn't interested, who wasn't attracted, and I proved to him that uh, he was in the university for knowledge, and I proved to him, I argued with him, that, that in that library, that we were right in front of the library, there was actually no knowledge. And he said to me, he said, yeah, he said, I, I, I can't, I can't uh, defeat you. He said, but still, I, I'm not interested. He was right. Come on, he knew how to do it. So in this way, I, uh, I, I learned very, very much uh, from him how, how to practice Krishna consciousness, and uh, it was a real boost to my life. I lived off of it, I'm still living off of it from, uh, from that early example. Later on, another thing that happened is Tamal Krishna Goswami, as you know, became involved in academics and had a meteoric career. I've never seen anybody rise uh, to the top uh, as quickly as... Uh, as, as he did. And uh, I, I, as a person who was an academic and became a devotee, so it was, it's been interesting to see people who started as devotees and, and became academics. And, uh, uh, and although this, getting involved with, with mundane uh, religious scholarship uh, has its dangers, very, very big dangers, which we have to deal with, it also has benefits. And I saw this with Tamal Krishna. I was very happy to see. Uh, because what, what, what we can learn from academics is, um, I guess, it, it is critical self-awareness. Uh, that's one of the best things you can learn from that. How, how to sort of look at yourself in a detached way in your situation and see what you're doing. Because ISKCON has had this, temp, uh, this tendency to be in a kind of a narcissistic bubble. We, we look at ourselves and our own ideas and think that everything we do is perfect. And, and uh, you know, as far as being uh, critical, that's for the demons, not for us. And uh, we don't look at ourselves. And uh, But if, you, if you're if you an academic student of religion, you look and you see it, you see it in a very different way. And so he benefited from this very greatly, I thought. So I was very happy about that. And... Uh, and uh, um, uh, was was uh, I think headed in a very good direction for for helping our movement uh, and, and uh, organize ourselves 
so we can also come up with certain standards of rigor uh, uh, and uh, your critical self-awareness that would have uh, benefited our movement, uh, that will benefit our movement a great deal. So I was working together with him in this field. I also knew that it was a little dangerous because Tamil Krishna Goswami was like these, uh, uh, he had the same mentality like, say, a, a, a test pilot for high-performance jet aircraft. Um, um, they do this thing, you know, the aircraft comes from the, from the manufacturer with what they call a performance envelope. These are the limits. And then the test pilots always like to, as they say, push the edge of the envelope. So whatever Tom Krishna did, he always pushed the edge of the envelope. So I was watching. <laughs> I told him this. I said, now you're an academic, you're in my turf, so I'm going to watch out for you. <laughs> so we were working together in this area. and, and uh, I stopped and used to stop off and see him in Cambridge, where he's uh, working on his doctoral dissertation. And uh, a very, a very interesting uh, time uh, dealing with the various issues. And uh, and uh, I hope that uh, uh, what he was doing and interested in doing and interested in bringing to ISKCON, uh, uh, we will continue. Tamo Krishna Goswami Ki. Om Agyanati Nirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Bansha Kalpataru Bhascha Kripashintu Bhairacha Patitanan Pavanipko Vaishnaveko Namaha Srila Prabhupada came to achieve something very special for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just as Srila Prabhupada was sent by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there are some individuals also who were sent by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to assist Srila Prabhupada. And undoubtedly, Srila Tamar Krishna Goswami Maharaj was one of them. I was very fortunate, although I came very late in Srila Prabhupada's pastimes on this planet, to have the association of Srila Prabhupada. And along with that, I was blessed with the association of Srila Tamil Krishna Goswami Maharaj. In 1977, early 1977, I met Srila Prabhupada and within a very short time, Srila Prabhupada allowed me to stay with him, be with him all the time. And he appointed me as his secretary for the Indian Affairs. And that gave me the good fortune of being in the same room with Tamar Krishna Maharaj, who was Sri Prabhupada secretary at the time. One very wonderful thing about Tamar Krishna Maharaj was that <clears throat> he was very, very affectionate and very caring. Unless and until one came close to Tamar Krishna Maharaj, probably he wouldn't have recognized this side of Tamar Krishna Maharaj. From a distance, he was a very heavy person. And everybody knows how heavy and fiery he could be at times. Tamar Krishna Maharaj himself wrote in his essays that he submitted in the Southern Methodist University that he was often identified as hot tamali. 
<laughs> and but I had a very different perception of Kamakrishna Maharaj. He was very caring, very affectionate. And as a result of that, I felt like being under the shelter of the elder brother. And he indeed was more than my elder brother in my spiritual life. He, just as he himself always wanted to achieve something very, very wonderful for Srila Prabhupada, he expected that everybody else also should do that, and he pushed everybody. And he pushed me in the service of Srila Prabhupada, and also he pushed me to go ahead in, in Srila Prabhupada's Sankirtan movement. Srila Prabhupada gave me sannas, but at that time I was serving Srila Prabhupada and I didn't have any chance to give any Bhagavatam class. So one day Tamakrishna Maharaj told me that. Now you